block off. I ain't karate kid. Bruce Lee. Giving you double vision. No fear. No mercy. Gloves off. Trying to hurt me. You can't hurt me. You can't hurt me. You can't hurt me. the leg. That's right, we are live, pal. I mean, live, pal. Good morning, everybody. I hope you're doing well today. It's good to see you're back in track. We're back on track. Uh, sorry about the last couple of weeks between Easter and Mania and all kinds of stuff. Um, it's it's good to be back and on our regular scheduling programming uh jimmy as always is gonna jimmy so we'll see uh to see what's going on today hey cold-blooded it's okay spelling is overrated um so uh because apparently words don't mean anything anymore because you know stuff and things so uh ziki sauce good to see you here uh cold-blooded awesome to see you here medium five it's great lab rat Good to see you as always as well. I'm glad we're rolling strong this way. Um, you know, uh, and it's it's good to be back. It's good to talk wrestling. It's good to have some fun. Uh, so, but on the topic of words don't mean anything anymore, uh, let's have a discussion. Let's talk real quick before we get into wrestling. Uh, let's talk about the fact that um, I heard some nonsense this week that if you listen to an auto audio book, You've read the book. Look, words have meaning, okay? Reading, as defined by the definition, is the intake of knowledge through visual sight to process visually and to take it in, whether through sight or touch. That is the definition, definition of reading i get and understand that the science says that when you listen to an audiobook and you read it activates the same things but when you listen to an audiobook you're not using your processing thoughts through the visual you're using your auditory not the same thing uh uh yeah uh look i'm not saying audiobooks aren't great uh cold-blooded uh I, i'm not just thinking, look but you're activating the same parts, yes, but you're not physically doing the thing. You're listening to uh, it, that. Like, you heard a podcast about the book narrated. I would say it's a radio production of the book uh, Media M5 uh, because, you know, a lot of times it's voice acting and sounds and such. Um, uh, I do not love my electronic. Uh, oh, Ebonic Bible book on tapes. Yes, yes. Um, oh, right, Lab Rat. Uh, I agree. We are at the age where a definition of words change to fit the narrative, unfortunately. Um, uh, so I don't know. I don't know. It, it's it's ridiculous. Kind of like, uh, what else is ridiculous this week? Uh, let's talk about AEW releasing the backstage footage of CM Punk. Do we, I mean, do we really have to talk about this? We don't have to talk about it. Jimmy's not here. I don't have anybody to talk to about this this week. So y'all are going to hear from me. Um, this did no favors to anybody. It made AEW look stupid. It made Jack Perry look like a punk. It made CM Punk look like a pansy. And Tony Khan, who feared for his life, an idiot. So, uh, like, I, I I don't even understand uh, what, what they were. Uh, there were no adults in the room. That's the problem. CM Punk says he's old and he's tired and he works with children, but CM Punk was the child. Um, I, I, yeah. But, I mean, Punk did hit. Look, I, look that did nothing for them. Gain a very small, uh, small few from Punk being in it. All it did was prove that Punk said was true. I would agree, but also it shows that Punk's kind of a punk and that Punk wasn't necessarily in the right. Um, um, yeah, and I, look, I, I think, you know, uh, 
see Spaceman. Uh, this was awesome. What? CM Punk looked like the jerk we knew he was by punching Jungle Boy once Samoa Joe left the room. And then Samoa Joe comes back in. Um, uh, yeah, Tony was in no harm. Chris Hero comes across to grab. I think that looked like Chris Hero, right? And the red shirt from the video I saw, that was the... Uh, he came across to get Punk. And Tony Khan never moved. He stayed behind the monitors the whole time. Um, I don't know. Look, it's it's a whole mess. We don't have any audio. But nobody came out looking good on this. And it did nobody any favors. For, for fuck's sake, why? Uh, yes, uh, Sonic. Hey, good to see you, Sonic. Uh, you're right. I didn't watch it, but it says uh, wrestling is all BS. Uh, nobody cares if CM Punk was a punk. How many UFC fights Punk win again? Uh, that would be zero, sir. Zero. And he didn't even make it to the third fight of his contract in three fights that he was supposed to have. Um, <laughs> yes. Chris Hero, the best part was his, uh, with his reaction. I agree, cold-blooded. Like, that was that was great. It was good stuff. It was good times. So, um, yeah. Like, and look. Um, I may be hopped up on energy drinks and such. I had to get up early and take uh, someone to the airport this morning. That someone is my girlfriend. Uh, she's in the Air National Guard and she had a training in Alabama. So I had to get to the airport. So I was up at four. Got to the airport. Joe left at five. Got to the airport by six. Came back to the gym by seven and worked out for a good hour and plus and then got home. So, um, you know, uh, but. You know, I I don't know. Uh, so, I and look, here's the thing. We all know why AEW did this. It's because it's the Wednesday after WrestleMania. Punk was a big factor in WrestleMania. Well, let's just jump on the Punk train and let's, you know, pull from those numbers of WrestleMania. And it did absolutely dick for them. Like, absolutely dick. The numbers show that there was barely... A bump in the in the ratings and i don't even man i don't, I don't know oop i forgot my phone that's her uh she says her flight is down apparently i have a three hour delay uh damn that sucks so uh yeah Air travel. What can we say nowadays? Air travel is a bitch. So, uh, yeah, it's... I don't even know. Like, what are we doing? Like, at this point, AEW looks like it's grasping for straws. I heard a comparison saying it's almost to the point of WCW 2000. Um, uh, it was three weeks ago, Sonic. Uh, he said, also, thanks for welcome back, for the welcome back. Um, I can't remember uh, the last time you uh, last show you did J Reese. It, it was three weeks ago because um, we didn't do last week, which was Mania, and then we didn't do the week before because of Easter. So um, yeah, so it's been three weeks, uh, Sonic. So, uh, but yeah, like you know, you you've got WWE. Let's be honest, whether you like it or not, you have to admit that they're killing it. They're doing some pretty auspicious things right now making you go okay yeah uh yeah that's uh i i don't know i i, I it feels like there's grasping at straws but there's also no accountability and look look they're talking about oh look aew had cuts um i don't know oh hang on I got to take this. I got a phone call from somebody that I don't really call. Hang on.
Okay, sorry, sorry. Uh, emergency, but it's fine. Everything's good. Uh, okay, so yeah. Uh, it, it was... <laughs> yeah, I wish he was offering me money to play the clip. I would take his money any day of the week. Uh, look, I'm, I'm, I would... Well, I don't want, I don't want the title. I just take the money, you know? Uh, uh, so, uh, the, the Dasha, I think, uh, Dasha was the only one, um, um, uh, that it, I was questionable about like why they fired everybody else. I'm going, okay, y'all had releases. So what? Like, um, you know, I don't know. Uh, Y'all want me to play the clip? Uh, I, I really don't feel like it. To be honest, there's nothing. There's nothing there. Um, you know, uh, I don't know. Uh, they rehired that workhorse. Really? All right. Uh, yeah, that's why. I, that's that's the only one I was surprised at. Everyone else, I was kind of like, what? Um, because I'm not everyone else on HMG Medium 5. That's why. Uh, but yeah, like Dasha. But I could also say this, right? Maybe Dasha has an in with, with Rock because, you know, she was on the Rock's um, athletic competition show, whatever they called that, the, you know, the gladiator type show. Um, and like, look, she's incredibly strong and fit and everything along those lines. So who knows? Maybe, maybe it was just for the best to get her away from there because... Uh, she was a professional talent, and let's be honest, AEW is run by the insane asylum. It's it's not a big deal. So uh, anyway, you know, so look, AEW, we can all agree it is a dumpster fire, but let's talk about what's not a dumpster fire. Let's talk about the fact that WrestleMania happened last week, and um, you know, what you guys think? You know, uh, I I watched night two, night one. I was kind of like. Eh, um uh, now I want to see what happens, then we can play take a shot every time I physically drop the title. Uh oh look, I would do just that just to fuck y'all up. Like I would do that on purpose at that point. Um you know, uh it's it's like if I knew that were the case, Sonic. And that HMG was like drinking every time I phone fumbled the title, I would just drop it all the fucking time. I, I would make that my gimmick, right? That would be my gimmick. I would be the dad. I, I would be the dad bot god wrestler and like have this awful outfit. And I'd just be walking around and be like, oops, and you know, just be dropping the title all the time. And dude, you'd be get so drunk, Sonic, that it would not even be funny. You'd have to go to the hospital with alcohol poisoning because I've made you drink so much. Um uh and look the rocks the rock is pimping everything everything the rock has always pimped everything um you know whether it's his own stuff or other stuff so um but you know it goes back to the fact of this mania um mania was mania uh i would say um <laughs> uh look i don't disagree right I need a I need a uh, Jericho security shirt. Why not? That dude should pack it up. By the way, I'm just saying. Small aside, um, Jericho should be done right now. He's done. He he should be done. Uh, so Mania was uh, I would say Mania. You know, it it had its moments. It had those things to it. Um, uh, I I feel like night two. Uh, um, you know, I, I feel like night two was maybe a little better than night one. Um, I, only because of the buildup of stuff, right? I mean, that's kind of that's kind of the the thing about it, right? You know, it was it was it was that, right? I mean, like. I feel like night two was not necessarily, you know, I don't know. Like, because you built up to a tag title match that, um, 
led up to, oh, hey, look, we've got this tag title match to determine what's going to happen on night one. It made it made night one feel less than. So anything that happened was, okay. Uh, I, thought, I thought the Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre match was interesting. Um, and a good way to start the show. And then we had the cash in um, with Damian Priest on Drew McIntyre, where they kind of did a uh, Roman slash Sheamus uh, moment. Um, that was kind of fun, actually. Um, and CM Puck interfered. We had the EO Sky versus Bailey. Um, solid match. Oh, and the night, I will say this night before, though, like Jade, Bianca, and um, Naomi versus Damage Control. Um, God damn, Bianca with that whip. I'm glad to see you brought the whip back with her hair. Um, I don't want her to use it all the time, but I do want her to use it more often. Um, um, yeah. Um, the Look, dude, Ralph is... Uh, look, I'm more jacked than Ralph is, by the way. Um, medium vibe. Um, look, I'm getting there. Oh, yeah. Oh. Ralph has doing got no shoulders like that. Um, I I thought this year's mania it, it, it was good. It flowed. Everything was solid. There was no kind of real just kind of eh. I really liked the Bianca Belair, uh, Jade Cargill, Naomi match with Damage Control. Like I said, I want to see Bianca use the hair more as a whip, but like I like that they keep it special. Like that was um, that was it. You know, uh, I feel like. Um, LA Knight versus AJ Styles was fine. Uh, it was a solid TNA match because I, I saw and I read that AJ Styles, TNA, LA Knight, TNA, and the ref in the ring was from TNA at one time. So it was a legit TNA match. And, um, you know, interesting. Um, LA Knight, you know, getting the win. Um, uh, I feel like um but it felt like it wasn't over and we're going to talk about that um so we have logan paul and randy orton and kevin owens fighting uh this was a fun match uh i think i think we all figured that logan paul was going to win um 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 uh Nice. Bianca whips her hair back and forth. That song is just old enough to be the new WWE. Good one, Sonic. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, this was a fun one. We had, like, at first, you know, Randy and Kevin working together, just beat the crap out of Logan. And then they have that moment where it's like, well, I guess we're going to fight now. And after having all this fun and frivolity, and uh, Logan Paul comes out with the win. Um, I don't know who the guy in the in the um, prime bottle outfit was. He looked stupid and just incredibly small and tiny. And he, I mean, his facials were great, but like, um, I don't know who that. Um, I don't know who he was. And like, I'm going okay. And they kept saying his name, and I couldn't figure out what his name was. I show speed or I, I don't even know, like what the hell? Um, and I was like, yeah, it wasn't it. If he wasn't, and yeah. Okay. And just a streamer. I don't even know. Yeah. I, I'm going, okay, cool. Like he was no threat at all. Like what the hell? You know, I show speed or like I, Pat McAfee said it a few times. Like I show speed and um, look, I never heard of him in my life either, but. I will say this. Yes, medium five. He flopped good when Orton kicked him. Yes, as he should have. As he should have. Because he looked like he weighed about 100 pounds wet. And Randy Orton kicking him, he went flying and bumped real good. And that's as he should have. At least there was that. At least there was that. And Logan Paul coming away with the win, I think, was good. I think it was a night, like some people said, swear, a good swerve. But I think, honestly, that's where they were going to go. And as a reminder... This is Logan Paul's 12th match, or or no, something like 13th match, and 12 of them in pay-per-views. Um, 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 and so, um, uh, gotcha. 
uh, Media Five says that he had a history with Logan and Orton a while back on their channels. Cool. Um, so yeah, it's like this was his 13 match, and 12 of them were in pay per views except for that one SmackDown. Um, and I, look, regardless of what you think, Logan Paul is impressive. Um, you know, yes, does Shawn Michael coach him? Yes. Um, <laughs> look, Randy kind of laid in there with that Spartan kick. He sparted the shit out of that kid. And I, I think, but it was the after the kick to land the cell. The kid did a great job selling after that. Like that was that was the thing um, that I think was that went real well with it. Uh, so uh, Logan getting win was was fine. I had no problem with that. I, I really enjoy him actually in the ring. I think he's incredible for having 12, I mean, guys, he's had 12 matches or 13 matches, 12 of them on, on PLEs or pay-per-views or whatever you want to call them. Uh, the Pride versus the Final Testament, six-man uh, tag team in Philadelphia Street Fight. The Pride wins um, with Bubba Ray helping out. We got a, um, uh, uh, oh, wow. Okay, so, um Says and meaning said Paul uh, Logan Paul gave away free prime new WrestleMania flavor after Mania for free people I knew took four bottles each it tasted like dishwater and lemon lime I was told one bottle sold on eBay for uh, uh, hundred and forty four bucks wow uh, okay and apparently the guy with Logan Paul is called I Show Speed what like is he a track runner? I don't know. Um, that's a dumb name. Uh, so, um, anyway, so yeah, let's. Uh, so, hey, cool on him for that. Hey, way to get your brand out there. Um, and of course, as we know, Prime is going to be the new center ring logo for all PLEs from this point forward. So, as when Cody wrestles in Lyon, France, in three weeks, as he told us tonight, Prime will be there on the center ring. Uh, the Pride versus Final Testament, uh, six-man tag team, Philadelphia street fight, because we have to have a Philadelphia street fight because Philadelphia and ECW and wrestling. And who was the special guest referee? It was none other than Bubba Ray Dudley. Look, I love Bubba Ray. But don't have Bubba Ray coming out in legit, like, referee outfit. Like, what the fuck was that? First curse word of the day. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, prime, but C4. Uh, yeah. Uh, um. <laughs> Media. He showed speed when he got kicked by Orton. Nice one. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. And I mean... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, right, but like he should have come out with no sleeves and cargo, like the the camo cargo sh shorts, right? Uh, but right, okay, right. But the main event didn't really go anywhere either, right? It was it was they didn't really traverse the crowd you know or if you're going to do a street fight have it out go out go out into the street do something like that you know uh, be different then um there was a unfortunately there's a lot of similarities between um um between the main event and this, right? Because it was bloodline rules, which means you can do everything. And this is a street fight. You can do everything. Bubba being there. Have Bubba and you know, cut off sleeves, referee shirt with camo cargo shorts and the glasses. You know, I don't know. Like do, do that. Um make sure you you have Bubba be Bubba. And I get that you wanted Bubba to not interfere, and he kind of didn't, and he kind of did. He kind of Gave his blessing on the what's up and get the tables. And so, you know, he had his spots because Devon wasn't there. It would have been nice if Devon would have been there and they could have done something like that. And uh, and so the the pride or – look, 
they don't say pride on TV, but they say it on like all the other stuff, right? Um, which I find very weird. Meaning they know the pride doesn't sound right, but they're still listing it on other things. Uh, makes me think they're just trying to do, a, they're going to do a quick rebrand. They're not sure what to do. But they beat them bad enough to send them to NXT, right? Because the final testament um, was like, oh, we couldn't make it on the roster. We got beat by Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits. So let's show up at NXT and go for those titles because um, the guys who won it off Braun Breaker and Baron Strowman look like uh, middle schoolers, and then we could probably take them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then, of course, uh, uh, yeah. The and then of course uh yeah uh and and also to <laughs> the first table broke right let's be honest it was pre-cut and a little too pre-cut and so it went blip when they put uh when they put a uh, carrying cross on it and then they have to do all the shenanigans to get another table oh man that was that was Super funny. Um, so, um, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, they, they kind of rushed it and made it look like. But you also remember media, like they had to go home, but they, they were so late. I mean, they were so early at the end. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know. You know, whatever. I'm not there. I don't do stuff. Um, then we had uh, Roman Reigns and Cody, and then these are back to back, right? So you had you had a six man Philly street fight. Then you had Roman Reigns versus Cody in a Bloodline Rules match. Um, and I think I think one of your illustrious um, co hosts here talked about maybe that they would like there would be people running in to counteract, um, um, you know, the Bloodline. And so we had Cody's Avengers Assemble. Um, the only one I, that I was not like was The Undertaker. Like John Cena made sense. Jay obviously made sense. Uh, Seth Rollins made sense. Undertaker. Uh, the theory was that, you know, the week before, too, there was, like, they were doing something, and then Austin 316 was, like, on the trailer or whatever, and that might have been Stone Cold's spot. Stone Cold would have shown up and stopped The Rock because, you know, they don't like each other. Um, uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, I think a lot of people were expecting because there were hints. Um Stuff was tweeted out at 316. Um, I, I think there was expectation of Stone Cold. And look, uh, uh, and yeah, I mean, true, but like, yeah, but Taker, but it's also WrestleMania, right? And Taker and The Rock had their thing, but like, it's WrestleMania, right? When you think of WrestleMania. You think of Hogan, you think of Undertaker, you think of um, Shawn Michaels, right? Like, like those probably your big three for WrestleMania and moments and things. And so uh, it made sense. I mean, of course, to me, instead of having The Rock or, I mean, uh, Austin, like the glass break and him running down, I, I to me, it felt cooler. Um, I, to me, it felt cooler to have the lights go out and then The Undertaker's there. And he choke slams the rock, and then the lights go out again, and him and the rock are out of the ring. Like, cool. I liked it. Um, I felt like the the Undertaker moment felt a little more organic. Uh, um, and look, yeah, night one. Yeah, but the rock has been known to sell a spear, right? When he Goldberg hit him, he sold that shit real well. He knows how to sell a spear. He does a really good job of selling the spear. Um, and he sold that Roman spear really well. It reminded me of when he sold the Goldberg spear. Um, you know, uh, so uh, 
it was an interesting match. You know, everything one, two, three, three crossroads for Cody to defeat Roman. Um, and we have a one, two, three. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, let's let's talk about that, right? Look, people complain about not having long-term storytelling, right? But in this moment with WrestleMania 40, biggest moment in Roman's career, he can go for the win. He's got the chair. He can beat Cody, but he sees Seth Rollins. He sees the shield gear. And he goes, you know what? I'm still pissed at this dude. You know, fuck him. I'm going to hit him with a chair. And, um, you know, way to go. Um, way to go. Like, good storytelling. And then that cost Roman the title. Um, and so that was that was pretty great. You know, long-term storytelling. And then you have Cody winning the title. And everybody coming in the ring, his mom holding the title and family and everything along those lines. Um, you know, I, I really, I really like the end of it. And then, of course, everybody leaves the ring and it's Cody and the belt. Uh, the calling out of uh, Bruce Pritchard and Triple H, um, you know, which is always interesting because in the, one of the first pay per views, Cody had the. Triple H thrown with a sledgehammer and breaking it. And now here's Cody embracing and hugging uh, Roman. You know, super cool. And of course, night two kicked off with Stephanie McMahon introducing WrestleMania. Interesting. Um, so, uh, um, yeah. But I think that was the point, uh, media, is that, you know, Seth was going to go in for the rock and Roman comes in and drills him. And um, that was the whole point. Uh, <laughs> right. Right. But we know Cody has season passes to Disney world. And he's there all the time because we see pictures of him and Zack Ryder and stuff like that. So that is just, he's, you knew he was going to Disney world. He's always at Disney world. I don't understand people who go to Disney world. It's not my bag. Like, it's a shit ton of money for, eh. um, and I know if you, you want to come at me for that, bring it on. I don't care. I really don't care. I'm going to find way better ways to spend my money than that. Like, for example, if I could share with you for a moment, what I'm going to be doing with my son for his graduation. Um, we are going to. San Antonio, SpaceCon in San Antonio. Uh, we already have the VIP admission passes. And so we're looking at experiences. So do we want to see Hayden Christensen? Do we want to see Rosario Dawkins? Do we want to see Hayden Christian and Rosario Dawkins together? Katie Sackhoff? Uh, Ming Na Wind? Maybe Gina Carano? Or Michael Pena? Or Michael Rooker? Or Sean Gunn? Nah. Ross Marquand? Maybe. Shatner? I think the fuck I do. Uh, Kate Mulgrew, no, she killed two Vix. Uh, do I want to see both of them together? No. Jerry Ryan, yeah. Uh, Tim Russ, not really. Um, maybe. But look, okay. Robert Picardo, Robert Duncan McNeil, Brett Spiner, uh, LeVar Burton, hell yeah, I do. Uh, Gates McFadden, but John Delancey, Q, hell yeah, I do. Uh, Denise Crosby, no, she died. Michelle Hurd, meh. Todd Stashwick, Triple D's favorite character. Yeah, if nothing else to say, look, Triple D, look what I'm doing. Um, LeVar Burton's daughter, not really, but Anson Mount, Pike Daddy, yes, I do. Uh, Melissa Navia, Ethan Peck, New Spock, yeah, I'm down for that. Jess Bush, uh, Jonathan Frakes, probably, but this is the piece of resistance for me and my children, me and my son. Uh, Richard Dean Anderson, going to see that. Um, see him. Michael Shanks from SG1, going to see him. Amanda Tapping, yes, please, SG1. So we're going to be spending some money and doing some things, and we're going to be doing that. And I guarantee you, for the money we spend, um, uh, yeah, um, we're going to check it out. Uh, so that's why, uh, well, yeah, good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Disney world. I went once and I was like 11. I was like, okay, 
and there were so many people and it was just so much and lots of waiting and lots of whatever and everything was expensive and over the top and uh, no i know people who do it and they go all the time and i'm just like no i did a disney cruise once and that was way better i enjoyed that a lot more um so anyway yeah so that was wrestlemania wrestlemania i felt uh was pretty solid this year like it, across the board it was really solid lots of solid matches Obviously, night one felt less than than night two because you're building to a tag match, which is the stakes for night two. So it made night one feel a little bit less than. But we still had some good stories with Bailey winning. We had um, Sami Zayn winning, um, Cody winning, um, Logan retaining. Um, we had uh, uh, Awesome Truth and um, A Town Down Under winning uh, the tag titles. And Judgment Day walks away with. Just mommy winning and Damian Priest cashing in. Um, so uh, look, great cash in though. I, I really liked it. Shades of Seth Rollins, right? Except Seth Rollins was during the match. This was after. Um, it was it was really well done um, on the cash in, and I liked it. Didn't waste time, right? You know, like sometimes they like get the briefcase. And they're like, I want to cash in. Are you want to cash in? I don't, I don't know what to do. He wants to cash in. Uh, no, got it, grabbed it, done. Excellent. Way to go. Good job, everybody. We did not make it feel stupid. We did not make it feel stupid. So, WrestleMania is over and done. Let's talk about what's to come uh, with last night's SmackDown. Last night's SmackDown was really uh, was um, April 12th, 2004. It was at the Little Caesars Arena in Detroit, Michigan on commentary with Corey Graves and Wade Barrett. Um, and, of course... We have the arena. When we go live to the arena, out comes the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Cody Rhodes. And everybody chants Cody, and he rides the title in the air, and you deserve it. And he, you know, kisses babies and shakes hands. Um, so um, <laughs> I predict the awesome truth win, and. The Rock Roman tag match. I'm as good as Meltzer. Yes, you are, sir. You're better than Meltzer. You are better than Meltzer. Sonic the head rat. Um, um, yeah, yeah. This is this is big. So last night Cody was talking about the Rock, and he said, "Yeah, but first in Lyon, France, I'm going to face one of these guys." Um, and it's L.A. Knight's name. He uh, so Kane the Space Man says. L.A. Knight's name alone got a huge pop from Cody last night before he was ever on screen, but does uh, the loss at Mania for AJ Styles dimension tarnish AJ star power? You know, it's an interesting question because here's the thing. So let's let's go over this, right? Let's talk about who all was mentioned last night, right? Um, and their reactions. Um, right? So Cody, he says he started with Santos Escobar. People are like, boo. Ray Mysterio be like, woo, LA Knight. And they went, yeah. Like, he was like, LA Knight, yeah. And he goes, yes. <laughs> Cody, I love that. That was great. Um, he goes, and, and he goes, uh, LA Knight. And everybody goes, the hottest rising star, LA Knight. And the crowd goes, yeah. And he goes, yes. <laughs> right. Uh, good job on that one, Cody. Uh, way to play with the crowd a little bit. Um, and, and then after that, we have AJ Styles and people are like, Ooh, um, and he says that he and AJ were, were one of only four people, two of four people to have the NWA and WWE championships, which, Hey, they said NWA on WWE TV and there's Bobby Lashley and people are like, uh, and he said, Bobby Lashley, you can tell that they were trying to get people behind Lashley and it's, it's super weird. You know, like people are kind of so-so with Bobby Lashley, but when the Street Profits come out, everybody goes nuts. Uh, I find this interesting, uh, why there's no love for Bobby Lashley, because Bobby Lashley is good, but it's, again, goes back to the fact WWE doesn't put Bobby Lashley in great spots. Um, I, I don't know what it is. Like, it's super weird. I like Bobby Lashley. I think he's great. I think he's he's an unsung talent that aren't, isn't used properly, and I don't understand why people don't like Bobby Lashley. I like him. And then he goes, and of course, his friend, Kevin Owens, and people cheered for Kevin. But LA Knight easily got the biggest pop out of those six guys. Um, 
And I mean, it is, um, it is a big deal um, for that reason. You know, um, obviously LA Knight is a big deal, you know, uh, and it just sets up for even more. Um, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's what it is, right? Cold-blooded, he's just so lost. Um, and the problem is they tried to go hard with the Street Profits and kind of doing a Hurt Business 2.0, but they're in between. They're neither really a – they're not really bad guys, but they're not, the, they're not like baby, baby faces. Right. Like, that's the problem, Lab Rat. Is Bobby a heel? Is he a face? Because the Street Profits aren't really heels. Not really. And they were kind of going that way, and then they kind of pulled them back. It's it's very confusing. Um, uh, yeah. And, yeah, I would agree with that, Sonic. People don't like Bobby because uh, when we did start to like him, W switches him up uh, on us, fool us once, and whatnot. I agree. You know, they – and it's probably not Bobby. It's probably WWE because they just keep bouncing him around and not getting him – where he needs to be um and that's the hard part right like they need to put bobby on something and stick him with something and look he could be a baby face killer like in the sense of like he could be a baby face and be tough and he's got the street profits behind him and be fab and you know they cheer when they're all together but bobby by himself they need to let bobby be bobby and let bobby cook and let bobby be a baby face he's good looking he's got a million dollar smile he looks amazing in suits. Let Bobby be Bobby, but be a good guy, Bobby, and let him just do his thing. Let Bobby cook. So, you know, I mean, if anything, this this uh, these things tonight showed who's the most over. I mean, really, let's be honest. LA Knight is the most over and would be an interesting matchup between them. But it also, I mean, here's the thing. Um, Yeah. Right, you know, her business was over his heels, but WD didn't plan it, so gotta go. And I think that's gonna change with Triple H. I think Triple H is gonna figure out what they're gonna do and they're gonna let people cook. Um, you know, so uh, Cody has this really you know long promo, uh, it says he's no longer the hunter but the hunted. His message to everyone is if you come to the king, you better not miss. For those on SmackDown, plain to be unfamiliar, his name is Cody Rhodes. Once undesirable, now become undeniable. Now the w undisputed WWE champion. And um, look, not a bad promo. Not terrible. You know, I don't necessarily like starting the shows with promos, but this was fine. It was okay. I didn't. I didn't like it. Now, uh, they cut to Bailey entering the arena and Rey Mysterio and the LWO together. Um, and uh, then after that, we have Jimmy Uso, Solo, and Paul Heyman are walking backstage. They see a door written American Nightmare with Cody's logo on it. They're angry, and in comes Kevin Owen, who enters through the door. Solo, to, and he's like, "Oh, hey, sorry, guys, excuse me." Um, I love Kevin, and he's just so understatedness. And we'll talk a little about that later. But like, um, Solo tells Heyman that he will handle him, and Heyman tells him that if they want the locker room back, they have to win the title back, and that's by order of the Tribal Chief. Um, so interesting. We're seeing some stuff, and Solo doesn't like that, and they stomp off, and, and they go to commercial break. Um, and then we get a video after we come back saying that Sheamus will be returning to Raw on Monday. Um, good to see Sheamus back. Um, you know. Um, hey, hey, hey. Shh, shh. You do not get that title of King of uh, 2K24 when you do that kind of shit, Aaron. No, sir. You know. No, sir. Do not do that. We're not there yet. Um uh yeah uh look yeah i agree i agree with that if w had better uh connects with tna than the, the new segment show and bobby had every tna belt to remind them that he does um yeah um so anyway uh so after that we see a little bit of after that announcement of sheamus coming back we see the highlights of wrestlemania 40 and then we get our triple threat match the first one of the night bobby lashley versus santo escobar and la night uh let's be honest between the three of these um it was really like bobby lashley or la knight for the win um the 
we knew that Santos Escobar and his uh, Legado de Fantasma family was going to be an issue. And then, of course, the Street Profits come in and neutralize all that. And then, so then it becomes back to three. Uh, and then, um, then uh, LA Knight hits Santos Escobar with the uh, blunt force trauma, and he gets the cover for the pin. So LA Knight wins despite having nobody in his corner. He comes away from the triple threat with a win because, of course, triple threats have no interference rules. So that's why all that happened. Um, and look, I'm going to say this I might get heat for it, I might get hate. I don't care. Can we stop? with the Rey Mysterio getting title shots. Can we stop? Please. I Rey is fine. We don't need Rey in every title shot. Don't need it. Don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. I'm 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 good with Rey. Rey can do his thing. Rey can be whatever he needs to be. But I'm done with Ray being the title shot getter. I'm done with it. Um, ooh, hello. Sorry, Candace Spaceman. Tonight for SNL, Ryan Gosling and Chris Stapleton. I'm a big Chris Stapleton fan. Um, I'd be interested in Ryan Gosling. I want to see his new show, Fall Guy, because I loved the Fall Guy TV show when I was a kid growing up. Colt Seavers, hell yeah, dude. That truck, oh man, super awesome. So I'd be interested to see what's going on with that uh, show, that movie. Uh, might, I might check out Saturday Night Live tonight if I stay up. So anyway, um, back to where we were at. Uh, yeah, Ray. We cut to backstage with Ray in the LWO. Uh, Ray says that uh, Santa says Gordon denies that he attacked Dragon Lee. They all laugh and tell Ray that they know the truth will surface. But tonight he's focused on AJ and Kevin Owens. And Ray tells her that he believes that he has another run as WWE champion. No. No. I don't. I, I don't want you to be. Um, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to see Ray as anything. You're fine, Ray. You're fine. Go have a seat. Run the LWO, let some of the other guys do their thing, and and all that. You're done. You you beat Santa Escobar, you beat Dominic at Mania. Now's the time for you to chill, have fun. So, um, so um, after they talk to them, we see Solo, Jimmy, and Paul coming to the ring. Um, we go to a commercial break, and after the commercial break, the breadliner are in the ring, and Paul Heyman introduces himself. Says, my name is Paul Haven. And of course, everybody repeats after line with him. And that he is, uh, by orders of the tribal chief, the bloodline offers no excuses about what happened after WrestleMania. We don't blame John Cena. We don't blame The Undertaker or even Jay Uso. Accountability is a very big word on the island of relevancy. And Roman has ordered that they accept accountability. And he talks about WrestleMania 39, Roman in the ring, focused, strategic, unemotional, and Cody took his eye off the ball when he saw Solo, and just like that, Roman took advantage. And at 40, Cody, Cody flipped the script. Seth Rollins told Cody that he would be his shield, and this uh, one piece of unfinished business in Roman's life. When Roman had the chair in his hand at WrestleMania 40, he couldn't have smashed, he could have smashed Cody with it, but legal, uh, with it legal and bloodline rules, he did because after 10 years of waiting for revenge on Seth Rollins, Roman gave in to temptation. He was distracted by his lust for revenge on Seth, took his eye off the ball. Cody Rhodes was prepared, strategic, focused, and ready. And like that, it was over. And he says, your new undisputed champion is, R is Cody Rhodes. Um, look, again, even Paul Heyman acknowledging this was really, really great. Long-term storytelling of that revenge factor, seeing those kind of thing um, on that kind of stuff. I really enjoyed so far, really good. And he says, but like a phoenix rising through the ashes, and as he's speaking, Solo gets in his face. Um, he tells Heyman that losing and winning matters. There are consequences to losing. That means consequences need change. Solo moves out, Paul out of the way, and he looks at Jimmy. And Jimmy's like, oh, you mean me? You looking at me? Me? Like, and then he gets in his face and carves his arm out and he hugs him. 
And he tells his brother that he loves him. And he's like, oh, okay, cool. And then he starts to walk away, and Jimmy has his hand out. And then some random hooded guy shows up and beats the shit out of Jimmy. And it's my favorite G.O.D. character, Tama Tama, the son of Haku, gets in the ring, and he beats him up. And Paul Heyman is standing in shock in the corner. Um, and he's got Jimmy all beaten up, and he tells him to stop and to pick him up. Solo goes for the solo spike, Samoan spike, and Heyman yells no, but Solo hits him with it, um, and he hits him with some more Samoan spikes, and then uh, he grabs Paul, and they say they all raise their fingers in acknowledgement, and Heyman says, call Roman Reigns, but Solo takes the cell phone, and he throws it, and he breaks it, and he stomps on it, and Tom, he points to Tom Tonga out, and he grabs a steel chair, and they place it around Jimmy's neck in the corner. And Solo tells him he loves him, and the fans chant, yeet. Solo runs and slams into the chair around Jimmy's neck. And he and Tama Tonga leave the ring with Paul Heyman behind them in disbelief. Dude, I've said this forever. Tama Tonga is really, really good. Um, Tama Tonga looks like a million dollars. Yeah. Um, that was that was it was a good segment. I enjoyed it. Uh, but I'm a Tomatonga fan. What can I say? I've always liked Tomatonga. Very cool dude. Um, you know, and I enjoy his style of wrestling. And dude looks like a million bucks. He's always looked like a million bucks. And so to see him last night um on SmackDown as part of the bloodline now, essentially kicking Jimmy out. Um, 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 yeah, it was good. It was good. So, it was good. Um, all hail Tomatonga. Good job. So, um, so we, we have some interesting developers now. Is Solo the new tribal chief? He took the phone from Paul Heyman and smacked it, which, or smashed it, which we know he really didn't do. Um, because Paul Heyman had, well, funny enough, before SmackDown on Twitter, Paul Heyman tweeted out, you can get your, your bloodline, uh, phone cases like I have from HeymanHustle.com. Uh, I found that hilarious. And then last night they took his phone, threw it on the ground and smashed it with the case on it. Hilarious. Uh, so after that, we go to commercial break and then. We have Cameron Grimes versus Braun Breaker in an enhanced squash match because at least Cameron Grimes got a little bit in, but Braun Breaker hits a spear and gets the win because now that he's finished up with his NXT business, he can be on SmackDown as always. Um, look, I don't care who you are, what you say. Braun Breaker is a big dude. Um, uh, uh, and so... I'm I'm uh I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. Um then we have a commercial break after this uh squash match and AJ, and we come back and AJ cuts a promo backstage as he'll fix what went wrong at WrestleMania. He tells Ray and Owens that they are collateral in his path. He's gonna demolish everything and prove a point. Um uh he says he take he hopes LA Knight takes notes um because the damage he will cost and that will be a taste of what he'll do next week and it will be phenomenal. So Bailey comes into the ring. Everybody gives her a you deserve it chant, as just like they did Cody. Um, uh, and she says she has retained titles at WrestleMania, lost titles at WrestleMania, but this one feels special. Uh, so last 11 years of career, she's been through her with everything. The ups and downs, the uh, live events are PLEs, never gave up. And she says thanks. And they chant Bailey. Um, uh, and she's excited to do it. And she wants to give an opportunity. Uh, to someone, and out comes Tiffany Stratton. She tells Bailey was a little rude that uh, how she was not given an opportunity at WrestleMania, and she tells Bailey that she's building some time. Um, she is building to some open challenge. She accepts because it's Tiffy time. Bailey says it's nice to meet her, but she was not offering an open challenge. She had someone in mind, and this person is Naomi. And Tiffany tells Bailey that Naomi couldn't even win a title if it glowed in the dark. Shots fired! Shots fired! Uh, Naomi's music hit, and she comes to the ring, and she is ready to beat that ass. 
And Tiffy tells her that we're in the middle of something and she's already beat her. Naomi tells her she's trying her on the wrong night. And she tells Tiffy she has earned everything. She's gotten the WD and she doesn't plan on stopping. Um, she tells Bailey she can't accept her challenge now because she first wants to take on clueless Tiffany right now. She want to beat that ass. And so uh, we go to a commercial break. Get a breakfast backstage from the doctor room. Out comes Paul Heyman in shock and he asks if Jimmy's okay. And he shakes his head. Tomataga steps in and looks at Heyman, and he tells Heyman, uh, by orders of the tribal chief, in comes Solo, who looks at his thumb, laughs, and leaves with Heyman asking what that means. So uh, then we come back to the matches already underway with Naomi and Tiffany Stratton. Um, this is a decent match. Uh, Tiffany goes for the prettiest moonsault ever. Naomi moves. She lands on her feet, and Naomi gets her into a jackknife cover and for the pin. Um, after that, we get a video package of Austin Theory and Grayson Waller uh, in that how they won the SmackDown titles. Uh, and they're the greatest undefeated tag team in history. And then we see Cap New Catch Republic and Street Profits backstage with Nick Aldis. He tells them he'll find them challengers next week. Um, you know, uh, uh, I like the fact that they went with Naomi and not Tiffany yet. I feel like. Uh, Naomi and Bailey is going to be a good match. Not that Tiffany couldn't have that match, but I feel like it's still a little early to give her that kind of push yet. Let's let's take some time uh, and build her up before we give her Bailey right away. Um, yeah, I don't know where Jimmy is. I've texted him. I've sent him stuff, um, all that fun stuff. But yes, yes, I will say that Lab Rat five stars all the way. Um, um, um yeah that's all i i gotta say yeah pretty much uh so then after commercial break we have logan paul gets a promo from his home about he won at wrestlemania um and cool uh is that there were 650 million impressions on wrestlemania and 200 million of them were because of him it's new aaron he's a part of it so after that we have Chelsea Green and Piper Niven, and they were uh, jaw jacking with uh, um, Nick Aldis, and he was like, "Okay, fine, y'all can y'all can do that." Um, and so they come to SmackDown looking for opportunities, and they got it in the way of Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair, the two ripest females that WWE has, and pairing them together. Um, not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. One, it gives uh, Bianca a little bit of a rest. Um, um, and I think, too, um, it protects Jade. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. When Nick Aldis, yeah, that was funny. He, I lulled when Nick Aldis looked away at the end when Chelsea left. Uh, yeah. He was not putting up with any bullshit or shenanigans. That's what I like about Nick Aldis. Like, he doesn't put up with bullshit or shenanigans, so it's good. Uh, so uh, we have Chelsea Green and Piper Nevin versus Jade Cargo and Bianca Belair. Uh, and uh, just to show, oh, hey, cool. This was amazing. So um, uh, the bell rings, and Chelsea and Bianca start the match. Uh, Bianca hits a spine buster and Piper is uh, tagged in. Piper points that she wants Jade and Bianca goes to make the tab, but gra uh, Piper grabs her by the hair and hits her with a power slam. And then she gives her a cannonball and she comes to the second rope and goes for a splash. Bianca moves out of the way. Chelsea is tagged in and Bianca tags in Jade. Jane slams Chelsea onto the mat. She lifts her up and slams her onto the mat. And with that, like, what is it? Um... OB, uh, ODB used to call it, what, the implant buster? Um, and then Jade gets the pin. And Jade does that weird pin where she leans back and she does that finger. Like, I don't know how I feel about that. It's just weird. I don't know. But still. Anyway, Jade, Gar Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair for the win in the squash match. Because why not? Um, yeah, that's what I think. Um Lab Rat, this is a good opportunity for Jade to really learn and be protected and learn on a Bianca, who's a solid performer. And why not pair them together? And um, I think this is good. 
match was perfect, exactly what it needed to be. Not too long, enhancement match to really show that these two are serious business. Um, so we cut backstage with Brian Saxon. He's with Kevin Owens, and this was great. Um, he asked Byron if he's seen those cool camera shots the last few weeks where people are backstage and they walk towards the ring. And this is what it feels like, dude. And he grabs the microphone, starts walking to the ring. He sees the Detroit Tigers championship belt, and he grabs it. Um, and then he knocks, was it CM Punk's shirt off the table at the same time? And he talks about his match with Ray and LA Knight, and he walks through Gorilla, and he, he looks at Bruce and he says, Hey, Bruce, hit my music. And he makes his way down to the ring. Uh, I This was great. I really enjoyed this. Um, uh, it No, I like, it made me feel weird, Lab Rat, if I'm 100% on it, or Sonic. It made me feel weird. But yes, I will agree. She's stupid, sexy Jade Cargill. Very stupid, sexy. But... Um, yeah, uh, but this segment with Kevin is great. I want to see him do this on the regs. Like, I like that, where the walk and talk, the one shot the that follows him all the way through, um, the timing and this, the skill to do those kind of one shots are, are great. Um, and then the, hey, Bruce, hit my music. <laughs> That's good. That's good. And he tosses the mic and he walks out to the ring with the belt, um, and they follow him all the way down. Um, Really good shot, really fun. Uh, then we have this triple threat match. And of the two matches, this one was, I feel like this was a better match. Like, this was really good. Um, everybody got good stuff in. Um, and uh, they really put on a good show. This was a main event worthy triple threat match. I really feel like they did a great job with this and telling this story. It was It was really well done. It was really well done, and I really liked it a lot. I feel like they did a great job with it. So um, good triple threat match. Boy, what an ending. Um, there was the superplex or uh, Fisherman's Exploder Plex off the top rope that Kevin did to uh, Ray. Ray had the double DDT. Look, for a minute, I felt like they, they were going to give it to Ray um, because, you know, it's Ray Mysterio and all that one's fun stuff. But it ends with AJ goes to the top rope um, and Kevin's on the bottom. Um, AJ climbs the second rope, and but Gray grabs his leg and Ray gets to the top rope and goes for a hurricane run, but AJ blocks it. And he does a style clash off the top rope onto Kevin Owens and then rolls over to pin Ray for the one, two, three. What a combo to end that match. Like, uh, uh, so um it's it's definitely a way like that was a way to end a match the avalanche styles clash off the top rope onto kevin roll through pin ray one two three like damn damn that was good that was real good um so very well done match and then at the end we go off the air with la knight and AJ Styles in each other's face. So we get this match again. But here's my question. One, does this end the feud for whoever wins? Two, does it continue to feud? And is, is there interference at the PLE between Cody, between the one of the guys and the other and the Cody match? Um, that's that's really the question. And three. Who wins? They, I mean, LA Knight is on fire, right? But here's here's my only reason why. One, Cody's a babyface. Um, AJ's kind of a heel. And Cody alluded to this. AJ and him are the only two people to win the NWA and WWE titles. I would think AJ's winning for that reason. The reason that he's more heel and it makes Cody look like a bigger baby face. And because of that little nugget that AJ has won both titles, just like Cody has. So I feel like that's kind of the direction they're going um, with this. So um, because. But. 
No, you don't. You, you can't turn LA Knight heel. Like he could go that way. He could go that way. Um, and AJ does make a better heel, uh, Sonic. I agree. But he's so hot right now. You can't turn LA Knight heel. Like I don't think you do it at a PLE in, in Lyon, France. Like that's something you would do at like SummerSlam, right? Like right. I mean or Saudi Arabia or something like that, or like a really big pay-per-view, you don't do it in Lyon, France at a backlash. I feel like. I feel like you wait and do it that way. Um, so, uh, uh, Yeah, I think, AJ, yeah, like you said, AJ can turn heel feud with Cody and then turn back face by shaking Cody's hand. I don't disagree with you on that, Sonic, but AJ's kind of already a heel um, in this aspect. Now, with WrestleMania, they didn't do a great job of making me decide either way if AJ or LA Knight were the heel because LA Knight kind of did some heelish things, um, you know, showing up at AJ's house, um, you know, doing the things that he did, it's like, hmm. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, I'm trying to think about, um, I'm thinking about how does that work? Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Um, see, like, that's the thing. That's the thing. How do we go? How do we go about it? How do we do these things? How do we make it work? Um, do I, I don't know. I don't know. True. True. And I guess, I, I, and I guess Sonic, you're right, and I guess you can see it as L.A. Knight is the babyface is taking the fight to A.J. Styles after A.J. has harassed him for so long, right? And so he took the fight to him rather than wait for A.J. to show up. He wasn't being a stupid heel, uh, I mean, babyface. He was being a proactive babyface, which, you know, let's be honest. Sometimes it's nice, right, Sonic? Right, guys? I mean, let's um, let's be honest. It's annoying sometimes when we have really dumb baby faces who don't take the fight to the heels. And I know that's like, well, and then they become the heelish. No, it becomes you're so fed up that you're going to stand up for what you believe in and who you are. So then you're not going to you're not going to keep backing down. You're going to stand up. And I, I kind of I mean, I could see that. So, yeah. OK, I see that Sonic. You talked me into it. He, he wasn't really a, a, a heel. He was baby face protecting himself as he goes forward. Um, so I could, I could see that. And it goes back to that idea that, right, that, you know, he made a promise on TV that if he wasn't going to be there, then he would show up. And he did. He followed through, right? Something said on TV that you do, you follow through with that. Um, LA Knight said, if he's not at SmackDown, he'll come to his house. And he did. He followed through with that. So I can appreciate that. I can appreciate the fact that something that was said on TV was followed through, and they did it in a fun and unique way with the live PD stuff. Um, yeah. Right? So I think you're right. Yes, it becomes boring and formulaic when you know the face can't attack until the heel tries to attack first. But I also think that you need to build, build, build to make the face snap so that he does become that proactive heel. But then you also remember it's wrestling, right? And you go like, hey, I remember when this happened. I'm not going to let that happen. This is going the same route. Let me make a difference. Let me make a change. So, you know, cool. Um, I like that. I think that's a good deal. Um, so, anywho, I think... We've got a we've got a interesting 
set up for next week where we have LA Knight versus AJ Styles again. I think AJ goes over. I feel like AJ right now is the one, like, honestly, that's the one to be. And I also go back to when Cody was rattling off the names of everybody, how hard he was trying to give the rub to Bobby. And that just didn't seem to work. And I find that upsetting, to say the least. Um, Yeah. And uh, I think you're right, Sonic. I will say this. That is refreshing to have something in WWE where you don't really know the outcome. I agree. I agree. Uh, not knowing the outcome sometimes is is fun in these aspects where you can go either way. Like next week, LA Knight, AJ Styles, you go either way. Um, and I think that's kind of refreshing. It's also refreshing to know, like, where is this solo Tamatanga Roman Reigns storyline going, this Bloodline storyline? Where is it going? Um, boy, that's a branch that I did not expect to see happen. Solo going his own route and stealing the wise man, destroying his phone and bringing in Tomatonga. Like we all kind of knew Tomatonga was coming in, but in this role, I don't think we saw that coming. Um, you know, other things. Uh, I did enjoy, I did, like I said, I don't really watch Raw. I see the top 10 highlights and I saw that John Cena making an appearance with uh, uh, R-Truth and The Miz was pretty great. Um, I enjoyed that as well. Um, so, yeah, like, look, there's some good stuff going on in WWE right now. Like, really, really, really good stuff. They are on their game. They're clipping. clipping. Um, they're moving along real well. Labrat says, I was hoping Tommy would do something with A. Oh, with AJ. I'm assuming you were talking about AJ. I do like a little bullet club thing and go after the judgment day, maybe to bring Finn back from the dark side of the judgment day and to bring him into the, uh, the club. Woo. Too sweet. Me baby too sweet. Um, maybe, but I felt like the bloodline was more, uh, was a more appropriate story. I could see that. I could see doing a club OC thing with AJ, but I think we all kind of knew when it was Tamatanga was going to um, WWE when we heard about that after leaving New Japan. This is probably the right play in the long run for him, really, in all honesty. So, um, I mean, that's it. Uh, let's rate this show. Let's Let's rate it. Uh, and, and guys, go ahead and put your ratings, uh, right? AJ, Eli, Drake, XTNA stars getting main events. Woohoo. Agreed. Um, put your, put your rating for this show in the comments. Um, let me know what you think. Um, can the space man <laughs> says an A. Who else? What you got? Sonic, Lab Rat. Anybody else got a rating for today? Aaron Ben um, aka the king of 2K24. Anybody else? Come on now. Uh, D, uh, where well, they had to kick the shit out of Heyman. Aaron, that's where high B for Lab Rat. Uh, Aaron, I disagree with you because Heyman is kind of the, you need that mouthpiece, that, that he's kind of the power behind the throne. Um, yeah, the OC disappeared against Sonic. That's right. So is that meaning it gets a C? <laughs> C plus, cold blooded, nice. Um, anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Been a long time since I was thoroughly happy with WWE. That kid in his face, man says. Um, I don't disagree with you. It's been a long time. I think us waiting and investing in Paul and letting him do his thing, I think, has really played a good part for this. Um, um, didn't watch it was avoiding the post WrestleMania crowd. Sonic, you never watch, let's be honest, you never watch. Um, so, um, I think Paul being in charge has made a big difference. Um, and letting him cook and having him have his thing, it's been really, really good. I really, en- I really enjoy where we're going with this stuff. Uh, so. Um, 
You've told me you don't listen, you don't watch Sonic. You that, that you don't watch. Um, but I mean, this wasn't a like this wasn't a like it was, this wasn't a roll after Mania crowd though. Um, Sonic, this was it felt like a regular like a maybe a little bit more amped like you know crowd, but like it's Detroit, so it's not like they were right there in Philadelphia and it's after WrestleMania. So I, I just feel like this was not a like raucous post mania crowd like um that. I don't know, media. Um oh, that's a good question. Labrat asked question. Um oh sorry, wrong one. Uh Labrat says, is who else uh or if they bring in more bloodline members? Um, um if they bring in somebody else, who else? Or do they bring in anybody else? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, if I'm honest, Media M5, I don't know. Because I haven't heard from Jimmy in a while, if I'm 100% honest. Uh, we talked last week, but that was about it. And so um, I haven't heard from him in a while. Uh, so... Uh, I hope he's well too. I saw that there's some junk going on in Sydney. Um, you know, so uh, not very good. Um, so, uh, so, um, so, uh, <laughs> Canada, if they, if they want, if they want Bloodline to continue, they must bring in everyone like the NWO and WCW. I, I don't know. Uh, um, uh, I just... I can't think of anybody else you would bring into this story. Honestly. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who else you would bring in. I don't know who else you would bring in. I can't. Nobody. Nobody stands out at the top of my head. Tonga Loa is not going anywhere. He signed. Um, he signed with New Japan. Um, his contract isn't up. So, um, Higaleo is not going anywhere. He's locked in with New Japan. Um, Jacob Fatu maybe. Um, uh, uh, Gorillas of Destiny. God. Um, that's who they were. Uh, so, um, I think Jacob Fatu, um, is supposedly, uh, supposedly Jacob Fatu has signed with WWE. He was at the Performance Center. Um, so maybe, maybe. The Rock had to step back from wrestling to go retcon the stuff he said about Biden while a heel. Nice. Nice, Sonic. That was a good one. Um, yeah. Hey, yes! We bring in Zane Vicious, pal. Bring in Zane Vicious. Let him let him cook. Let him cook. Uh, yeah, maybe Zilla. I don't know. Um Ooh, cold blooded says Solo needs to replace Heyman with Rikishi. Interesting, interesting to say the least. Um, so I guess that's the question: Are we seeing a bloodline coup with Solo, where Solo takes out Roman to be the tribal chief on orders of the tribal chief, aka Dwayne Johnson, the high chief? Maybe so. I don't know. I don't know. But we know Tonga is Tonga Samoan. Hence the name Tama Tonga. So, uh, uh, 
I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting. There's a lot to kind of consider and figure out and figure out where to go from here. I think that there's a lot to go into. Um Uh, are you pro or con the new Captain America? No, because I mean, um, let's talk about this and then Labrad might get to yours in a second here because we're going to talk about that. Um, I mean, I'm pro because Sam was given the shield in the comics. Like, Sam Wilson is a good friend of Steve Rogers, and Steve Rogers is not going to give his shield to anybody. He's going to give it to someone he seems worthy of it. Um, you know, I think that's so it made sense that Sam would get the shield. So, um, I mean, they teased that Bucky would get it, and um, I but I kind of liked that they went with Sam. I think that's good. So, I have no problem with it at all. I don't think it's weird. But I've read the comics. I know that that's where they're going, and that's kind of what they did. Um, okay, Lab Rat says, bring in some Japanese guys and have them play Samoan. First of all, Tama Tonga is not Samoan. He's Tongan. And it says Tama Tonga. Son of Tonga is, is, is how it's translated. Um, yeah. Um, so, and Zane says, uh, Zilla and Jacob Fatu going to be the new age outlaws of the bloodline. Maybe. Um, it couldn't hurt. Uh, so yeah, and I heard about this uh, uh, media about how he just made amends with the reality of wrestling. Um, and then Mantle Bats Off made sense because of the story. I agree, I agree, I agree. So Anyway, look, guys, I don't have anything else to talk about. I really don't like. I, I don't really follow a ton of news. We kind of talked about the AEW debacle and everything going on there. Um, we talked about Mania. I feel like we've got everything in a good place. Um, I feel like um, Majesty came in and gets the bloodline to follow him as a new shield. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, gotcha. Yeah. I need Tama Tonga. It's time. The joke, they had Samoans play Japanese. That's right. You're right. My bad. Look, Lab Rat takes me a minute. And like I said, I've been up since four. Um, so, um, so anyway, uh, the only other thing I could think of to talk about is the legendary sumo wrestler and, and part time professional wrestler Aki Bono died this week at 54, I believe. Um, so, uh, so yeah, the Hawaiian born Japanese sumo legend, uh, he died two days ago. Um, and I think, yeah, 54 heart failure. Uh, Akibono Taro, he, he passed away this week. So, um, yeah, man. Join us. Uh, you know, join us for SmackDown and chill with us. Uh, oh, no. No, no. Fale will not be in WU. Um, yeah, supposedly his dojo is a scam and he's like torturing people and stuff like that. Um, um, you know, I... Mm, yeah, to, Fale will not be going anywhere. If you notice, he's really not with New Japan anymore either. They barely use him, if anything, at all. Um, so, yeah, right? 54. You know, sumo is not easy on the body. Um, you know, and, you know, your heart can only take so much. So, um, you know. And, hey, Canada Spaceman, good for you. I like Dynamite and Rampage this week. I will no longer I no longer listen to what others to others what to like. Hey, like what you like, man. Um, you know, I go for it. The like what you like. 
if they, if you like it, cool. Like wrestling, as the vet says, is a la carte. You you take it, what you get it. Everything has its own thing. So, um, yeah. Oh goodness. Sorry. Yes, I saw it. Kevin's face. Good thing this had nothing to do with your comment. Uh, there's the gun case right there. Gun case right there. I'm not gonna pull everything out today. Um, but you can see the gun case right here. There it is. See? Um, oh, uh, yeah. I, I think, I think just enjoy wrestling. It's wrestling. Enjoy it. Um, have a, you know, have a good time. Oh, I guess I need to, um, <laughs> uh, I can tell you what's in it. Uh, a 300 blackout AR. A nine millimeter Glock 17, a, 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 a 12 gauge um, Benelli Super Vinci, and a 243 Savage rifle. That's what's in there. Uh, that's what's in it. So uh, I need to give my rating for the show. I asked you guys, and then we kind of got distracted uh my rating for the show i'm gonna give it a b a solid b um solid b um it was a good show post mania uh progressed a lot of stories branched off some stories that were really good uh led us in some directions that we weren't expecting um i feel like b is um oh sonic sonic Yes, good movie. But if you're watching X Men '97, oh, um, let's just say if you haven't seen it yet, let's just say they go there with Genosha. And if you know, you know. And holy cow, be prepared. Be prepared. That's all I'm saying. Be prepared. Holy cow, X Men '97. Um, you know, uh, that was that was. Whew. Oh, yeah. Episode five was wild. Yeah. Uh, you think they're making the new future past? Uh, maybe so. Yeah, because Cable made an appearance. Oh, oops. Oops. Um, good show. Good show. Um, wow. Um, we're enjoying the heck out of that one. And, oh, we started, uh, what did we watch? Oh, Fallout. Saw the first uh, first season. Um, ooh, Executioner song storyline is really really good. Um, or altering a little bit maybe. Uh, Mag and Rogue, yeah. Um, they went there with Rogue and Magneto, yeah. Not really, but also too. Uh, Fallout. Jacob and I watched the first one. Yeah, it is. All eight episodes are out on Prime, and um, all of them you can watch. You can just binge the whole thing. We watched the first episode and whew. It was good. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Oh, no, I love my shotgun. It's great. So anyway, all right. So let's, ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, land this thing. Go watch Fallout. Episode one is really good. You're going to enjoy it. Uh, go do all the things. Listen to all the Hami Media stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, if you want to find me on the Nets of Enter, you can always do it right here on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram at Men. If you want to follow Jimmy, go watch him and uh, follow him at, at DJ Mass Effects on Twitter and listen to him tomorrow, I'm assuming, tomorrow on um, after the after the collision, we got to sift through the wreckage. Uh, oh, Shogun looks really, really good. Um, um, that looks really good. So go follow Jimmy. Go follow everybody on the Hummy Mini Group. By the, by the way, remember, $5 a month gets you an access to Channel Attitude, all the best wrestling shows on the internet, hands down. Anything, Vince Russo, the brand, uh, all that fun stuff. <coughs> Monday Locker Room, Wednesday Locker Room, um, you know, Friday Locker Room, uh, The Smack Attack, Next Level Wrestling Review, all the fun stuff in between. Make sure you go to Channel Attitude. Check it out. Uh, $5 a month. Worth it. Worth it. You know, put a lot of Scott Ole in my pocket. You know what I mean? Ah, oh, not that I get anything for this, but hey, cheers. 
Um, shout out to all you for who support us on Channel Attitude. We appreciate you very much. And for any other show that you want to listen to, go check out Hami Media Group on Spotify, Facebook, or your podcatcher of choice to listen to other shows that appear on the feed. Uh, it's going to be worth it for you. So make sure you go do that. Check it out every now and then. Make sure you're seeing what's going on. It's been an hour 30. We've given you plenty of time. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here today. We're glad to be back because we back, baby. We're here for it. Just as WrestleMania has ended, a new beginning has gone. And we are here to have a new beginning to start with you, to show you the path and the direction of which way WWE is going to go. We're going to be here for the twists, the turns, the ups, the downs, the rounds. How we're going to do. Uh, what are we going to do? Who knows? You never know who might appear on this show. You never know what might happen on the show because we outlaws, baby. Mm, who knows? But as always, thank you for being here today. Uh, shout out to Cold-Blooded, Sonic the Hedgehog, Media M5, Lab Rat, um, Cam Space Man uh, for being here, Aaron Vigelow, Sitting Vicious uh, for making the appearance in here. Uh, I was hoping for a Jimmy run in, and maybe if I go longer, he'll get it. And I think that's everybody that I mentioned because uh, I said Lab Rat, Medium Five, Cold Blooded. Yeah, I got everybody. Um, if you are in there lurking, I see you. Um, you know, uh, yeah, it's great. So make sure you check out everything. Thanks for being here as always. And until next week, on the same Stone Cold time at the same Stone Cold station, thank you, as always, for being here. And until then, make sure that you're always... Don't be a nightmare. Ladies and gentlemen, and until next time, we will see you later.